Good evening, everyone. Uh, we're going to call the meeting to order. Welcome to the Planning and Strategic Initiatives Committee. This is a formal public meeting to consider applications under the Planning Act. If a person or public body that would otherwise have an ability to appeal a decision of the City of Kitchener to the local planning appeal tribunal, but the person or public body does not make oral submissions at the public meeting or make written submissions to the City of Kitchener before the bylaw is passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision. All right, so the first item will be uh, the official plan amendment for 146 Trafalgar Avenue. And we have a five minute staff presentation, or a 10 minute staff, sorry. <laughs> we will have a five minute presentation on the matter. Thank you. Ms. Anderley? Through you, Madam Chair. I'm here this evening to speak to the recommendations before you with respect to a proposed official plan and zoning bylaw amendments that are proposed by Blaze Properties for the property at 146 Trafalgar Avenue. This site uh, contains a building that was originally constructed as a Catholic elementary school. Um, that school closed in the mid-80s. It was used for about 20 years as a private Christian school. Uh, that, when that school closed, it was purchased by the current owner who has been leasing it, I believe, to another private educational establishment. So the applicant is proposing to develop this site with 51 bungalow townhouses. The owner has indicated that they plan to market this development to a senior's demographic and they intend for it to be a land lease community. This is a form of tenure that combines ownership of buildings with the rental of lands and is often attractive to a senior demographic. So in order to permit the proposed development, the owner requires an official plan amendment and a zoning bylaw amendment. So first with respect to the official plan amendment, um, the proposal is to redesignate the lands from institutional to low rise residential. And in the 24, 2014 official plan, there are certain criteria that uh, staff give consideration to when making a recommendation um, with respect to changing the designation. So first, whether the lands are suited to and needed for institutional uses. Secondly, whether the city requires the lands for municipal purposes. And third, whether the lands could be better used to achieve other housing priorities and policies. So this is an aerial view showing the subject lands. It's in the Stanley Park neighborhood. Um, with respect to other institutional uses in the area, this area is particularly well served by institutional uses. There's a number of um, elementary, uh, middle school, and a high school in close proximity. There are quite a number of religious institutions nearby, as well as a large residential care facility. From a municipal perspective, there's a community center nearby, large cemetery, as well as a number of different park spaces serving different types of active open space type needs and also natural open space areas. The proposed development will help to increase the variety of housing um, within the neighborhood. It represents a form of housing that is not well represented, being bungalow townhouses. Also helps, um, one of the things the owner's proposing is that this would be special needs housing. Um, and so that's something that we're looking to increase within the city as well. So what we're proposing is that a specific policy would be added to the site to articulate this vision. And that would require that uh, the development would um, be universally accessible and designed to be barrier free. And so this would help to increase um, the, or, it would uh, ensure that the form of being clustered townhouses would provide special needs housing in the community. So with respect to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment, the, uh, one is also required for this site. So it's proposed to rezone the site from neighborhood institutional to residential six with both a special use and a special regulation provision. Generally, the R6 zone is a low-rise residential zone that permits a, a broad range of low-intensity residential uses, including multiple dwellings. We're proposing to add a special use provision that would restrict this to a cluster townhouse form of multiple development, um, and also prohibit lodging house and coach house dwellings, which was uh, specifically are not being proposed and was a suggestion of the residents to um, take those out of the zoning category. Um, we're also proposing that special regulation 745 be added. That would limit the maximum height of the dwellings to nine meters and one story dwelling, so nine meters to the peak of the roof. Uh, also require that parking be provided at a rate of 1.3 spaces per unit and restrict parking and privacy fencing between buildings and Trafalgar Avenue. 
So staff are of the opinion that the proposed zoning regulations help to provide a form of development that's compatible and sympathetic to the surrounding neighborhood, will help to contribute to the streetscape and accommodate appropriate uh, on-site amount of parking for this development. So through the um, development process, we had a number of opportunities to consult with the public. The preliminary notice was circulated to property owners in August and notice signs were posted on the property. In November, a neighborhood information meeting was held. In February, uh, we, we placed the notice for this public meeting in the record and a courtesy notice was mailed to those residents who either responded or attended the neighborhood information meeting. And as a result of the circulation, we did hear from um, residents, quite a few who liked this proposal, um, that it proposed that the, it considers seniors' housing needs within the community, and specifically it provided an option for people wishing to downsize from their single-family homes and who wanted to continue living in this neighborhood. There are also a number of questions and concerns that were raised by residents. These are mainly related to things like increases in traffic, adequacy of parking, the proposed density, the form of development, adequacy of infrastructure, general nuisance type questions. All these areas of concern have been articulated and staff have provided responses to these in the staff reports. Um, I'm happy to elaborate on any of those responses through the questions if you wish. However, generally speaking, we're of the opinion that the proposed development will not have a significant impact on local traffic or on, on street parking. The proposed density is appropriate to a low-rise residential neighborhood and the form of development is sympathetic to the surrounding residential dwellings. There's sufficient servicing infrastructure for the proposed development and the city and developer are, will, are and will be available to work with residents should any concerns arise over matters related to the construction process or with respect to ongoing site maintenance. So in summary, staff are of the opinion that the subject applications are consistent with the policies of the provincial policy statement, conform to the growth plan, comply with policies of the regional official plan and the city's official plan. The changes will help to facilitate the development of a low-rise residential development that is design, will be designed to provide special needs housing that is universally accessible and barrier-free. Staff are of the opinion that this proposal represents good planning and we recommend the applications be approved. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Uh, I wonder if we should hold questions of staff until after the presentation of the uh, proponent. So. I'm going to ask Mr. Mark Dorfman to uh, come forward with a five-minute presentation on behalf of the proponent. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee. My name is Mark Dorfman. I represent uh, Blaze Property, Inc., who are the company that is uh, putting forward this app these two applications and uh, is intending to develop this particular property as your staff have, have indicated. Um, Blaze Properties has also been the uh, proponent and the developer of the similar project at 50 Midland, which is Midland near Ottawa. With me uh, this evening is Mr. Vol, who's the principal of Blaze Property, and um, as a surprise, he brought some of his family with him, including his three grandchildren, who are interested in how you, uh, how you uh, conduct your meetings. Uh, Blaze Property uh, supports the staff report and recommendation as they have been presented to, count to committee this evening. Um, there, we have had a lot of discussions with regards to the content of the recommendations. Uh, your decision to uh, approve, or Council's decision to approve these two amendments allows the City and Blaze to proceed to the next step, which is uh, site plan approval and the more detailed design in terms of the urban features and the uh, servicing features as well as the, uh, the parking and the landscaping. Um, and the next step, obviously, is to achieve better affordable housing for older persons in the city of Kitchener. Um, just one note, and I'm not going to speak mu very much longer. I really appreciate uh, the open and transparent communications uh, with the residents in the community. Uh, these discussions have provided a valid insight 
to the design of this project. And as your staff have indicated, um, changes have been made and concerns have been uh, addressed. And certainly the uh, residence meeting was quite valuable and very, very useful. The dis professional discussions with your staff have been very productive and certainly sharing ideas uh, with our team has been very, very useful. And I appreciate uh, that as an, a very worthwhile example of the city uh, uh, undertaking open government. So with those comments, Madam Chair, members of the committee, um, I, uh, I leave it to you to uh, address any issues and I'd be certainly uh, happy to uh, to respond. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, let's just see if there are any questions of Mr. Dorfman. Seeing, oh, let's have a look. Nope. Yes, okay. Uh, so uh, I'm going to start with, you do have a question? Okay. Hi, thank you. Um, I was just wondering, I noticed that um, the plan is to remove 30 trees um, and to um, keep 28 of them, retain 28 of them. Um, is there any way that these 30 trees are going to be replaced or um, could more of those be uh, there, um, retained? There, uh, I don't know what, sorry, with all due respect, I don't know what plan you were looking at, but there are hardly any trees on this particular property. The trees that you see on the concept plan are on the neighboring properties. And there are very f there's very few trees that will be removed. I think there's less than six. Okay, so I'm looking at page 127, which I presume you don't have in front of you. Okay, Perhaps. Uh, you know, we have actually staff chiming in, so let's see, just one minute. Uh, perhaps yeah. Ms. Anderley can yeah. shed light. Through you, Madam Chair, I think what uh, Councillor Chapman is referring to in the environmental comments, there's a reference to the tree preservation plan. And within those comments, there is a comment that there are 30 trees um, towards the center of the site. Most of these are trees that are surrounding the school building. Some of them are things like um, Manitoba maple and other ones that have grown up or ones that are part of the landscaping around the school. So in order to facilitate the development, yes, those trees would be taken out. Um, all the trees around the perimeter of the property that would be in shared or that help to provide a visual screen are proposed to be retained um, through the development application. And yes, through the site planning works, there will be a landscaping plan and so there will be additional perimeter tree plantings as well as landscape plantings within the site that would help to replace any vegetation that's being removed and probably enhance beyond what's there today. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Schneider. Hey, I have no questions. Uh, just at the appropriate moment, I'd like to move this. And I want to thank uh, both uh, Blaze Properties and you, Mr. Dorfman, for the excellent uh, representation at the uh, citizen meetings and your openness to the questions and concerns and addressing those. And uh, it was very well done, in fact, to the point where some of the residents that were attending the meeting were asking when the units were going on sale. So I think that speaks uh, yes. very highly of your work. Thank you. Thank you. There are no further questions for you, Mr. Dorfman. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. All right. I see no, uh, no one in the queue for questions, so we have a motion on the floor uh, to, uh, to move the recommendation. Sure. Yeah. Rec recorded vote or no? Uh, no, I think we're fine. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. All right. So next item is the draft plan of a vacant land condominium at 155 Westwood Drive. Mr. Uh, Brian Bateman will provide a five-minute presentation on the matter and respond to questions. And then we'll have a few delegations as, as well. Yep, to take your time, that's fine. That's right.
Okay, Mr. Bateman, are you ready? Okay, here we go. <laughs> I thought I clicked you in. I, th I clicked you off, that's okay. why. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, go right ahead. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, committee members. Yeah, we're here this evening to discuss an application for a draft plan of vacant land condominium located at Westwood Drive in Kitchener. Staff is recommending approval. Just some background. Uh, this is the uh, former Monsignor Gleason School site. It's the uh, obviously the area that's outlined in red. Uh, it was closed in 2012. The site uh, is approximately 2.03 hectares in size, and it's located right right in the heart of the of the community. Uh, it's right next door to Westwood Park, backs on to the CN Railway lands, and it sides on to an apartment building, and then fronts on to Westwood Drive. So it's located within a neighborhood that has a very diverse uh, form of uh, housing. There's single detached, semi-detached, and multiples located in many ways an ideal neighbor neighborhood. Uh, Westwood Drive is a collector street for the neighborhood that runs between Glasgow and Westmount, uh, Westmount Road. So here's the proposal. So it is a vacant land condominium, and really the proposal is to divide this block of land, this former school site, to create 58 unit areas, so which essentially represent one half of a semi-detached dwelling. So there's 29 semi-detached dwellings in total, split in half to create 58 uh, unit areas, and common elements, which the common elements comprise the roadway, the private roadway, in a berm, which I'll, I'll uh, discuss a little more and uh, want to get into the site plan. So what has informed the, uh, the vacant land condominium is a site plan. Um, you can see it's very, very similar to, to the vacant land condominium. The plan has a U-shaped private roadway with two access points onto Westwood Drive. Um, the majority of the units face internally to the private roadway. Three of the semi detached dwellings, six unit areas in total, front on to Westwood Drive. That's to give this some development, some presence into the neighborhood. And if you notice, uh, what I really like to point out is that the, at the very back of the property, you'll notice there's uh, where the road loops, there's some visitor parking. That's the berm. Uh, that area there, that's a, a hundred foot. Uh, um, uh, uh, barrier or, or uh, um, I can't think of the right word, but it, it's, 100, it's 100 feet in width. It contains a berm that is to be used as a safety berm for the railway lands. There will be a noise wall located on top. And within that area, there is visitor parking for the development. And also there is a trail connection to Westwood Park. So each of these semi-detached dwelling units will have its own garage and driveway. So they comply with the zoning regulations in terms of parking and that the visitor parking at the back is additional parking for the development. And what I should also emphasize too is this, this proposal, and it's probably unique, we don't have many of these, where it is just a draft plan of a draft plan application. There's no zoning bylaw amendment. The, uh, the developer Cook Homes is meeting uh, the zoning to the letter of the law. button. There you go. Thank you very much. Uh, as is required through this process, the application gets circulated. It gets circulated to staff and agency as well as the public. I'll start off with uh, agency circulation and departments. Um, they've done a very f uh, full and thorough review of the proposal. There were no major concerns cited through the application. The owner will be required to enter into both a modified subdivision agreement and a site plan agreement for these lands. So I think the city is, and, and, the, and future residents are well protected by the agreements that will be put in place. Public comments. So we sent out 106 letters. And they were mailed out July 3rd of last year to property owners within 120 meters. This is, this is required by our council policy. 
I received eight individual re written responses, uh, one of which was sent on behalf of approximately 12 property owners. So I, I heard from about 20 people in total. From that, a neighborhood information meeting was, was arranged in October of 2018, and approximately 20 to 25 people attended that meeting as well. And then I think what that meeting pointed out to, uh, to staff was there were a lot, a lot of issues, broader issues that sort of were outside of the scope of the application. Uh, things like traffic calming and, and other things that were raised that we felt it was important to hold a, a second meeting. You know, a drop-in session was held on January 22nd of this year and that there will be some follow-up in regards to that session. So in terms of, of high-level summary of comments, you know, sort of likes and dislikes we've heard, and I think uh, I heard from a few residents who said that they liked semis. They felt this was an appropriate form of, of housing for this neighborhood, and I would agree with that. In terms of concerns and questions, uh, generally speaking, these were technical in nature. Um, uh, there were concerns around drainage and flooding, traffic and access points, parking, density, loss of open space, and traffic calming measures. And I think uh, you know, these were obviously addressed in my staff report, if you, if you read them. I think I've done a fairly thorough job of, of, of pointing those out and, and trying to address those to the best of my ability. And we, uh, we certainly recognize that a lot of these, these are important issues to the community. Um, and we want to acknowledge that, that some of these were not directly related to the application. Again, they, they fall out of the purview of the application. And that in that regard, this evening, I have, or I say I have, but there is staff here from transportation planning, engineering, and parks who can speak directly to these many of these off-site issues, as I'll call them. Uh, if you have any questions, you can please direct them to, to Barry, Nick, or Niall, who are here. So in, in conclusion, uh, planning staff is the opinion that this, this vacant land uh, draft plan condominium um, addresses section 5124 of the Planning Act appropriately. Uh, the, uh, the proposed division of land will result in a low rise, serviceable and compatible form of residential development that is consistent with the character of the neighborhood. The proposal represents good planning and accordingly staff recommend that the application be approved. Thank you for your time and I or other staff will be pleased to answer any questions that you may have. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Bateman. Uh, I think what, before we ask questions of staff, though, what we'll do is we will take delegations and, uh, and then we'll come back to staff. So first up, we have a representative of the proponent, uh, Ms. Kristen Bernstill, who has a presentation. Welcome. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Kristen Barrisdale from GSP Group. Uh, we are here representing uh, Cook Homes with respect to the proposed development. I will note that Mr. Ian Cook and Mr. Tim Allenson from Cook Homes are here as well. If there's any questions that come up with regards to uh, sale, construction, marketing, etc. Thank you. So I'm, I've got a really brief presentation just to touch on a couple of things that Brian spoke of. Uh, again, the site, um, Brian touched on this, uh, formerly Monsignor Gleason uh, Public School, which was closed in 2012. Uh, the site was purchased by Cook Homes in 2016 and the school was demolished in 2017. The property has been vacant for quite some time. Uh, as Mr. Bateman uh, touched on, the application for draft plan of condominium in front of you tonight is to address the tenure and ownership of the future residential uses. As Mr. Bateman uh, touched on, we're not seeking approvals for the use themselves or any changes to the regulations. The draft plan of condo would establish 58 residential units, um, as well as common element space, which would include the private driveway, uh, visitor parking spaces, a community mailbox, and outdoor amenity area. Um, in addition, it would include uh, some of the servicing considerations in the rear property lines, as well as the noise wall and barrier that Mr. Bateman spoke to adjacent to the rail line. 
Uh, so what you see in front of you is a, a copy of the draft plan of condominium. Um, it confirms with existing zoning, which does permit semi-detached units. Um, as noted in the staff report, the condo process will essentially create parcels or lots of land for the future units. Um, with each parcel or lot of land complying with zoning standards. The common element will include the roads and the majority of services under the roads, uh, visitor parking, open space, adjacent to rail, um, all of which will be maintained by the condo corporation. Uh, the draft plan of condominium was developed based on the site plan application as submitted to the city, which is on the slide right now. Um, detailed site plan uh, submission identified units, including porches and driveways. Uh, each unit has the uh, minimum requirement for rear yard space, providing private outdoor amenity space for each unit. Uh, visitor parking and community mailbox located at the south end of the site. Uh, the noise wall and the derailment berm, as Mr. Bateman spoke of, is located adjacent to the CN property line. Uh, and then there's open space identified on the site, which will include landscaping, identifies a trail connection. Uh, there is a fence at the rear of the units. And in addition, the landscape plan that will be prepared will provide for some uh, common uh, landscaping in and in front of the units. Uh, what you see here is simply a, a prettied up version, if you will, of our site plan, a rendered version of it, showing the units, the green space, uh, and the private driveway. Uh, so our draft plan of condominium, the initial application was submitted in May 2018 with supporting studies including a planning justification report, acoustic noise assessment, and transportation opinion letter. Uh, the site servicing and grading and stormwater management report, the initial report um, provided for identified proposed sanitary and water connections from Westwood Drive, as well as a stormwater management connection to Westwood Drive. Um, there are roof water and background, or sorry, backyard runoff will be directed to the stormwater management system through infiltration galleries located in the rear yards, which essentially acts as a, 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 a short-term holding solution before it's actually discharged into the stormwater management. Uh, in addition to the initial uh, technical report that was prepared by Stantec, we also submitted a supplementary uh, stormwater management commentary letter to the city in August of 2018, um, which was prepared to address some of the comments that we had received from residents, some of the feedback we had received from uh, the ward councillor. And it noted that um, overall there's a 43% reduction in the five-year flow rate and a 48% reduction in the 100-year storm event flow rate um, associated with the proposed development by comparison to the previous school that was on the site. Uh, in addition, we also submitted a transportation review in May 2018, which noted the previous school use of 200 to 250 students, that the proposed development generally provides for less traffic than the school use proposed. Uh, in addition, we had multiple follow-up discussions with city staff with regards to access and sight lines. Um, similar to the previous school, the uh, two proposed driveways to the site are essentially remain where they were in the school, um, particularly with one of them being aligned directly with Fernwood Place. Uh, we also had some discussions with city with regards to sight line and visibility, particularly as it relates to the driveways backing out onto Westwood Drive. Um, and through discussions with the tra our transportation consultant as well as city's transportation staff, it was determined that uh, visibility considerations on the driveways uh, proposed with the associated development would have similar constraints or similar uh, function similarly to those driveways that exist on the north side of Westwood Drive. Uh, just a few key milestones or dates that I wanted to highlight. Uh, it's our opinion that we've gone through extensive consultation with uh, both city staff and had the opportunity to receive feedback from residents. Pre-submission site plan was in May 2017 with the site plan application in November of 2017. Um, we submitted, or we had a pre-submission for the draft plan of condo in March of 2018, followed by the draft plan of condominium application in May. Um, as Mr. Bateman touched on, we had a neighborhood information meeting in October 2018, um, followed by the Westwood Drive neighborhood meeting, uh, which we attended to hear and to listen to what residents had to say, um, generally understanding that some of the concerns or, or the majority of the discerns, dis concerns discussed at that meeting were kind of broader neighborhood issues, uh, but that did have some impact or consideration on the proposed site. So that's it for my presentation, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Okay, thank you. I don't see any questions for you at this time. Oh, oh, sorry, one sec. Do you have questions now for this part? Yeah. So um, what we'll do is we're going to have questions of staff after the delegations. But for now, each delegation as they come up, uh, if, if uh, members of council have 
Uh, mem members of committee have questions, then we'll ask them of each delegate now. Okay. Okay, great. So we have, a, have questions for you from uh, Councillor Johnston. Yes, thank you. Uh, through the chair, um, Ms. Barristell, I'm wondering if you can ask, answer a question with regards to um, uh, the Appendix A with regards to the, uh, the Condominium Act. I'm not sure if you have it there in front of you. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, are you speaking to the staff report? Um, yes, I guess it is in the, in the staff report. Um, so my question um, was um, in uh, number three, there's a point X on there, or if you can find that. So I, I was wondering if the, um, uh, if the point in there would adequately prohibit condo owners from doubling their driveway size and therefore changing the stormwater allowances in the hydrogeological report. That might be a difficult question to uh, answer. Uh, through you, Madam Chair. Um, so typically what happens when we do the, or I can't, when the engineers prepare the design uh, for stormwater management, there's some redundancies that are built into the calculations and the assessments that they do um, to allow for overages um, beyond the conservative expectations or, or, or analysis that they have within their work. Um, in addition, the condo declaration will be designed such to restrict how people provide for um, any changes to the units as they exist on the date um, or purchase or the, or the time that they move into. So a number of these things coupled together, we feel confidently that it's, it's going to discourage um, or perhaps per, flat out prohibit people from expanding their driveways or enlarging them to the point where it becomes problematic from a drainage perspective. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a question for Mr. Cook as well. Should I wait to the end to ask him that? Since it's for Mr. Cook specifically, and uh, sure, if okay. Mr. Cook is not doing a different presentation, then now, now would be I the can time. Wait to the end, if you want. No, that's fine. Mr. Cook, would you mind coming down? Thank you. Good Hello, evening. Mr. Cook. Good evening. <laughs> Um, I was wondering if, uh, if Cook Homes would be willing to work with the city to contribute to upgrades to the park next door. Okay, well, um, obviously we understand that uh, the, certainly the biggest concern that was raised by the neighbors was what's going to happen to the park. And you know, there's, there's, there was existing parking area that was sort of an overflow from the school, which will, you know, which will be uh, disconnected. And, and from the outset, from our first uh, pre-application meeting, we had uh, volunteered uh, two staff to, uh, uh, because we, well, frankly, because we, we don't have a, a park requirement on our own site, and we've got a park right next door, we felt it was entirely appropriate that we would uh, earmark some funds uh, as, as may be required, such that the, the city could, in fact, uh, um, act on some of the concerns that have been raised or perhaps will be raised by the neighbors. So I would suggest at this point in time, um, we would be more than happy, uh, as I say, on the record initially and certainly this evening, we'd be more than happy to uh, work with staff. And, and once staff has had an opportunity to identify, uh, in fact, what some of the needs may be, uh, we would be happy to, to step up and, and, uh, and certainly uh, contribute some funds to assist in, in whatever works have to be undertaken there. Okay. That's wonderful. Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, we have questions from Councillor Chapman. Yeah, um, I understand one of the concerns of the residents is the, the water runoff. Um, has, have you considered um, looking at permeable driveways or surfaces within the, the complex to mitigate this problem? After you, Madam Chair, so the infiltration galleries located at the rear of the properties are, are considered permeable infrastructure. Um, again, I note that we're providing 43% reduction in five-year storm event and a 48% reduction in a 100-year storm event, recognizing that there are some, are, are some existing issues that I think are beyond this site. 
Uh, we have looked at or have discussed the notion of uh, permeability construction practices, but they're, they become feasible particularly when you speak to snow removal um, and the fact that the units themselves will be owned by individuals and not the condo corporation. Um, once, it, once it becomes an individual property ownership issue, it becomes hard to ensure that those systems are maintained. It's like if you have a retaining wall in your rear yard, once somebody buys the house and then it changes hands, it becomes hard to ensure that those systems are, are set in place permanently. Okay, but the driveways or the hard surfaces on the, around the, the, um, the units themselves would not be permeable surfaces? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, no, they won't be permeable. They will be typical asphalt. Okay, thank you. Okay, there are no further questions for you at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have a delegate, uh, Mr. Roger Suffling. Good evening. Good evening, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much for the uh, opportunity to address the councillors and thank you to staff for their time here this evening. Um, I'm a neighbour of the, the proposed development. Um, we, uh, we've formed a, a kind of informal group that doesn't have a name or a chair or anything, but um, there's about 40 to 50 of us all together. So uh, in broad terms, I'm speaking on their behalf, but I don't have any official sanction for that. Um, we are not, we have not taken a NIMBY approach to this development. We, we would rather have had our park, uh, the school closed, the land was sold, the developer bought it, the city didn't buy it, and we're very sad about that, we're still hurting over it. But we're not taking a NIMBY approach. We are frustrated in some of our desires for the site, um, but I'm heartened by uh, two questions and the responses this evening because I think they, they address some of the issues and I, that's, that's really welcome to see that. So that gets us off on a good, good note. Uh, now I have some, some issues. Um, we were told initially that we could, uh, we, we could um, see some kind of redevelopment of the park uh, based on what we had lost. Uh, and then later on, in uh, January, we were told that wasn't possible because this was a well field, and so there were very few things that could take place in the park. Um, I'm, I'm heartened by Mr. Cook's response this evening. I think that's terrific. Um, but at the same time, we were told uh, not much development in the park, but on the other hand, the developer can pave over part of the well field area within 100 metres. It seems that there's a contradiction there that has to be resolved. The second issue was parking stresses. Um, and again, that's been addressed in the last uh, five minutes, which is great. Um, we have a concern that if there isn't enough parking on site or near site, then people using the park will spill over into neighboring cul-de-sacs and so on. We had a, a major problem about 20 years ago, so we, we have some experience to, to back this up. I'm going to move along because those issues have been partly addressed. Road safety. This is a more difficult one. We have 18 entrances proposed here in 130 metres of street. They include three streets and the rest are driveways. Uh, this is on a curve at the bottom of a hill where people speed. And parking has recently, in preparation for this development, been allowed. Uh, we see this as a major hazard here for kids crossing the road. And the last point is drainage, and I'm going to try and get to some of the issues here. Uh, the soils in this area used to have um, wetlands on some of them. There are lenses of peat, and the peat um, is breaking down, and so the existing infrastructure is breaking up. That includes the storm sewers and water lines. In the area along the street, uh, right next to the development, we've had uh, six major excavations in the street to repair breakages. Two of these were in the last year. This has to be fixed. And Cook Homes will have trouble marketing this development if it gets a reputation for having infrastructure problems. The next thing is there's a drain right in the old school property. Sometimes the water comes up within 50 centimeters of the, of the ground level. That is what we've observed 
and it directly contradicts what the uh, what Stantec is telling the the developer. And you need, according to the US EPA, you have to have a meter below the bottom of your um, gravel uh, collectors to uh, to enable those to function. And we don't think that that is the case. We think there's a drainage problem there and it needs to be addressed. The extra paving has been done. Um, so what we're recommending, uh, there's some things I've t rapidly taken off the list here. Fix Westwood Drive. Do it while you're doing devel development. Because when that heavy equipment goes in there to grade the site, they're going to break the sewers anyway with the way they are. Address the parking issue. Address the road safety issue right outside the entrance to this, this area. And um, please, please work with the residents because we had 70 people out in January. I went around last week and I was having trouble moving people, not because of apathy, but because of cynicism. They're very angry. They turfed the last councillor and you need to do something here about our neighbourhood. We're on the sharp end of densification and you need to do some amelioration. Thank you. Uh, thank you. We have uh, questions for you. Uh, Councillor Ioannidis. Thank you for coming in and uh, expressing some of your concerns. Um, the one that I'm concerned about is the engineering. And uh, can you elaborate a little bit more why you're concerned about that? Because mm -hmm. I, if I see a report here that's <coughs> documented by a mm -hmm. third party Yep. engineer that's stating that it's going okay. to be basically a 50% 50, 50 reduction in yeah. the runoff. So I'm not understanding yeah. what's your concern. Okay. Um, now, don't misunderstand me. I understand the distinction between storm and sanitary sewers, but I'm going to use an analogy here. It's as if you're living in an apartment and the landlord comes along and says, I want to redo your bathroom. Well, fine. But the trouble is... Uh, you want to put in a low flush toilet the trouble is the sewer underneath it doesn't work it doesn't matter that you're reducing the flow off the site we have all that water coming down the hill from all the properties up the hill that have been subdivided plus the 90 townhouses at the top of the hill that are going in and then we have an infrastructure that's 50 years old was badly installed to start with and is breaking down now, if you have that next to your development, and your development is, is flowing into that storm sewer, and it's breaking all the time, and the water mains are breaking, how is that good for the new residents of the condo? It's unacceptable. And it's unacceptable for us as residents, because, you know, when, when that storm sewer broke in uh, 2007, I think it was the first event, um, we had a bus kind of came through the, the, uh, the flood, and it caused a tsunami that flooded somebody's basement. We had a car that drove into the flood and the cylinder head was cracked and the car was a write-off. If there'd been a fire that day, we wouldn't have been able to get a fire engine in. And these are the sorts of things that we're facing. Okay. Um, if we have a break of the uh, sanitary sewer as opposed to the storm sewer, then I don't know what's going to happen. That hasn't happened yet. I hope it doesn't. Okay. But the sanitary sewer will be at the bottom. So I think that's why we've got less problem with it. Okay, but your concerns to me don't relate to Mr. Cook. Your concerns are addressing city issues. So you're addressing you're addressing. I am addressing the city, I guess. I think that's. Yeah, it's I not, think it's correct. It's um, it, one of our major frustrations in the whole of this thing, with parks, traffic, engineering, planning, and so on and so forth is that there are a number of silos here. And every time we go to address a problem that goes across boundaries, people tell us, oh, that's not my job. You know, that's, that's not part of this discussion this evening or today. And that's what you have to grapple with as council. You've got um, a drainage issue here, which is not a natural drainage issue. It's a manufactured issue from bag construction. And it needs to be fixed when you're putting this condo in. Okay. And we're fed up with being told your number are 193 on the list or number 500 on the list. We don't care. We flood. Okay. And we flood because of bad design and bad construction. Okay. Well, I, I, I don't disagree if you're fed up. Um, but 
we do as a city, we have to manage the city as a whole, and mm -hmm. you can't just pick certain projects and be efficient. And when there's other city portions in the city that need just as mm -hmm. much as attention, so that's a, that's another debate. But um, th that issue with the with the sewers and drainage has nothing to do with Mr. Cook's development, in my opinion. Um, it might be if he's trying to sell the units. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, we have Councillor Johnston. Thank you. Um, thank you through the chair. Um, Mr. Suffling, thank you so much for coming in tonight. And um, I met with you on a, on a number of occasions now. And you are passionate about your neighborhood. You care deeply about um, making sure that uh, things are, um, uh, are going well there. And I really, um, I really, really appreciate our conversations and um, everything that you've done to, uh, uh, to help this along. So thank you very much. Um, I'm thinking that perhaps some of the questions that you have around um, uh, around the infrastructure piece, maybe there's maybe Mr. Reedman or someone can address some of those this evening. I know that you're not uh, there for formally on the agenda to speak, but maybe there's a few comments that you could make. Maybe it's not you, but <laughs> or is it is it Mr. Golan then? Thank you. Madam Chair, should I stand down at this point? Uh, so, do you have further questions for Mr. Suffling? No, I'm going to ask okay. other staff that might answer his questions. Too. Okay, so uh, thank you. You can have a seat. Thank you. All right, so we have Mr. Nick Golan. Uh, yes, I thank, uh, thank you, Madam Chair, uh, for the opportunity. Um, I would just like to address uh, a couple of things that were raised today and then I'm happy to answer any additional questions that come forward. So uh, with respect to um, the drainage uh, issues identified in Westwood Drive, uh, it is correct to say that uh, there's some concern there as there is in many other parts of the city as well. And so it is something that we are looking at resolving as part of a larger infrastructure project to replace the entire road and all the infrastructure within the road. That includes Westwood Drive and Westwood Crescent. Those are currently timed for 2027 and 2023, uh, so not in the too far distant future. And specifically with respect to the uh, drainage leaving the proposed development site, uh, we are confident in the report that has been provided by Stantec uh, Engineering to, uh, that demonstrates which uh, the runoff will be reduced overall after the development is uh, constructed and put in place. So from strictly a stormwater management and drainage perspective, the development will actually improve the situation on Westwood Drive. Uh, to the point where you will not see any issues, I can't say that, but it will be an improvement over the existing conditions, and I can say that. Thank you very much. Did you have further questions, Councillor Johnston? No, uh, uh, Mr. Thank you. Okay. All right. So next up, we have Ms. Carolyn Vinicek. Welcome. Uh, so I'm here today to talk about the park and how it's being affected by the development. Um, so I was pleased to hear that the development is interested in helping uh, keep with the existing amenities that are at the park. Um, the park had a lot of shared amenities between the school. Um, and so some of this, these shared amenities were the parking lot. There were two baseball diamonds. Uh, school used to have an alternate playground. There were basketball hoops available, and there was a lot of open space. So I know the city is not saying that uh, we're not losing open space, but the community and the neighborhood used the school and the park. And so they were one, and they were open space together. Um, so the parking lot. If we were to lose the parking lot, this reduces the accessibility to the park. Uh, there are some parents that come and drive to the park and then watch their children play. Um, whether they have accessibility issues or not, it's not up to me to judge. 
Um, there's a lot of surface flooding at the park, especially in the spring. There are two points on the sidewalk that flood. A lot of people use the parking lot to access the playground. Um, a lot of people use the parking lot for other uses as well, such as learning to ride bikes, uh, seeing people drive along with my kids, uh, cars, uh, their electronic cars. Um, we've seen the bus, school bus parks there. So there's lots of other uses. The police are in there often uh, as well. Um, loss of the parking lot also pushed parking to the neighborhood. Uh, when we've observed last summer uh, when the parking lot's been full due to baseball games, people have parked on Nell and Fernwood. They haven't bothered to park on the curb at Westwood Drive, and I wouldn't either because I think that's dangerous. Um, I know there's an issue with putting in a parking lot uh, because they're concerned of the salt with the runoff. So one of my questions is, could a seasonal parking lot be considered that wouldn't be maintained in the winter? Uh, and then we wouldn't have the salt issue. Um, so here you can see some of the surface flooding that occurs at the park under the trees. Um, that area there is usually flooded in the springtime. The parking lot is to the left behind some of those trees. Um, so we are currently losing a second baseball diamond. I don't think there's anything that can be done about that, but they've decided that the current baseball diamond isn't going to get any improvements and will just be used as a practice diamond, which I find unfortunate. My son played in a league where we actually used that diamond cross, so it was nice to be able to walk to games instead of having to drive 20, 15, 20 minutes to other locations. Um, we did lose uh, the alternate playground that was on the property, and the current playground was upgraded in 2013. Um, I couldn't find any information on what went into the side the playground upgrade, um, of whether or not it was considered, um, the school was considered as part of it um, or not. So we did lose extra additional play space in the neighborhood. Um, and then we are losing the basketball hoops. There are three basketball hoops currently at the school where um, some of the older children used to play. And now with the new park plan, they're not going to be there. So our park is only going to service um, children ages 2 to 12 instead of uh, servicing a broad spectrum of the ages. And then, yes, we are having a loss of open space. Um, so we're hoping that... Uh, maybe some of the amenities, the other existing amenities to the park won't go away. So, uh, does anybody have any questions for me? Uh, well, thank you very much for your presentation, Ms. Vinicek. Um, so uh, at this point, I don't, oh, are there any questions? You can ask after, yeah. Okay, so there are no questions for you at this time. Okay, I forgot to mention that there is currently a sewer in the parking lot that does, I believe, help with some of the surface flooding and with the plan to remove the parking lot. I don't know what the plan for that sewer is, so I'm hoping the surface flooding wouldn't increase in the park. So, um, so as it was mentioned in an earlier part of the, the evening, uh, the, the flooding will be improved and not... Uh, not made worse uh, based on the uh, engineering studies that were done for it. Yeah, I hope so because we're one of the houses that had our basement flooded mm -hmm. due to the flooding in the area. So, okay, I'm hoping not to have to live through that again as well. <laughs> of course, I hear you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next, we have uh, Ashram Sharif registered to speak. Uh, and not here. Okay, thank you. I see many people in the audience. Were there others who had hoped to register to speak this evening? No? Okay, great. So uh, now we're going to uh, turn it to questions of staff. Okay, Councillor Johnston. Okay, thank you. Through you, I have um, a series of questions for uh, our staff that are here. I was wondering if I can ask Mr. Lobley to come up. Thank you. 
Thank, thank you, Mr. Lobley. Um, okay, so I do, I do have a series of questions. Uh, I'll start with, does this development change the amount of city-owned parkland for the neighborhood? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so you, Madam Chair, no. Um, the, the amount of parkland that the city owns is not changed by the uh, development being proposed. Okay, thank you. Um, I was wondering if there was a way of, rep of repurposing the tarmac parking lot to include a possible reuse into play space, for example, um, uh, a basketball court. Um, so staff will need to look at the residual amount of asphalt. So the, the asphalt that remains in the, um, the city-owned park, its access is actually through the school. So there is currently no access into the, the asphalt that sits on the city-owned piece of property. Um, and so we do have to do something with that now residual piece of asphalt. Staff are open to suggestions as to what that would be, and we're quite happy to work with the community to, um, to look at alternative purposes, such as repurposing part of it or all of it as, as an asphalt um, basketball court or multi-sports court. Thank you. Um, we've heard from neighbors tonight uh, that there's a concern with drainage issues on the park property, uh, particularly where many would cross the road to go to the park as well. Can the city do something about that for play and walkability? That's going to be something that I would need to take away and talk to other members of staff about. We, this is the, the first we're becoming aware of um, a potential drainage issue around access to the park, causing access to the park, so we're quite happy to work with the community to identify those issues and look for solutions. Okay, thank you. Um, how old is the park equipment on the site? Uh, the, through you, Mrs. Chair, Madam Chair, the, um, the park had a, a, a slight rehab in 2012-2013. Uh, the rehabilitation that was done to the equipment was as a result of it reaching the end of its life cycle and needing replaced. Um, the, there's two separate play pit areas within the park. One play pit contains a swing set, and the swing set is... Um, one of the swing sets that will never die, so we were able to just refurbish the swings that were on that and keep that functional. Um, then there was in the second play pit, there were a number of multi-use pieces of equipment. They were upgraded, so there's a, a multi-use jungle gym type piece of equipment, a climbing frame, two springers, and another swing set. And that was all upgraded at that point. Do you, do you think then that, that what's there now um, would account for multi-age um, usability? Uh, the, the park is designed for um, multiple age uses to, to access it, and so yes. Okay. Um, now, this question may not be for you, Mr. Lovely. I think it uh, uh, normally it would go to Mr. May, who's not here tonight, but I'm wondering what sorts of assistance um, are available through Love My Hood for park enhancements, and maybe you can answer that. So I'm, I, I can take a stab at it, um, for sure. Uh, we've worked very closely with our partners in the Love My Hood initiative, and they have a number of grants uh, that are operated right the way through the whole of the year. Um, many of those grants can be used by communities to uh, work with the city for enhancements uh, to places like parks and, and open spaces. Okay. Thank you. I think that's all the questions I have for Mr. Lobby. Thank you, Councillor Johnston. Uh, so I see that we might have uh, our last delegate here tonight. Uh, Mr. Ashraf Sharif? Yes. Okay, please join us and, um, and provide us with your comments. Okay. Uh, so, um, first of all, I... I'm here to uh, to present uh, the community members' concerns about the safety uh, going and commuting to the park, especially for kids. So uh, I have a couple of notes on the uh, planning staff's recommendation report. So in there, there's a... Uh, mention on the uh, 2014 provincial policy and that uh, this proposed development is uh, in line with the policy of building active communities. Uh, the same 2014 policy also mentions uh, in the section about uh, public spaces and uh, recreation open spaces uh, that uh, the aim is uh, planning public streets and spaces and facilities to be safe 
meet the needs of pedestrians, foster social interaction, and facilitate active transportation and community connectivity. And in section 1.4.3, it says, uh, directing the development of new housing towards locations where appropriate levels of inter infrastructure sorry, and public service facilities are or will be available to support current and projected needs. So the need here is the safety of the community. And uh, we are seeking ways to ensure that the speed limit is obeyed so that the cars uh, could stop for the poor pedestrians when they need be. Let's say a child was crossing the street and you know he wasn't paying attention to some speeding car. So we should have some measures to make, uh, to force cars to go by the speed limit, which is 40, because we have a huge responsibility of ensuring that the park is safe for kids to go there. Now, uh, I know some, and, and the report that was, uh, uh, you know, uh, submitted and published online, that there was a mention about the uh, traffic calming measures. Okay, but. Uh, uh, there are a few reason, uh, there are a free, uh, few reasons we see as a community that is not properly presented in this report. One, the figure that is based, uh, that is provided in the report in page 2-8 are highly outdated. Uh, in the past year, Westwood Drive has, been, has seen the rise of a new project of around 100 residential units, which is at the beginning of the street. And this was, uh, this, this figure is about the uh, uh, daily traffic, um, daily traffic of cars is before this development. And, and now we're talking about a new development which will add 60, about 60 more residential units. So the figures there about the, uh, you know, uh, commuting is, is, is outdated. They are not current. This is one thing. The other thing why we need a, a, a safe, a safe cross or a crossway or a zebra cross is that most of the houses, crescents and drive and courts are on the opposite side of the park. So the kids need to cross the road. Uh, the, the third uh, point which I want the uh, committee to consider is that when we, when uh, in this report, this the measure is about the uh, vehicles, not the pedestrians. I mean, the the uh, Westwood Drive has a lot of uh, apartment buildings, low-rise apartment buildings, uh, a number of uh, condominiums, a lot of uh, you know, semi-detached and detached houses both in, at the beginning and at the end of the road. And buses go, you know, go in front of the park as well. So there's a high volume of pedestrian movement, which is not considered in this, in this uh, report. And the aim is you know, to, to safeguard the pedestrians, not the cars in this case. So uh, these are three points which we wanted to highlight, which is missing in, in the report. And uh, we wanted to uh, highlight also um, a few positive measures we've seen, in, in, uh, for example, uh, in front of uh, Lakeside Park. We've seen uh, some measures taken in the past couple of years to ensure that the cross uh, way to the park is, is ensured, and along also Gatewood Road. There was some measures mm -hmm. done. So we're seeking something similar to this okay. to ensure that the kids have a safe crossway to the park. I'm just going to ask you to wrap up your comments uh, at this time mm -hmm. because we have five minutes, but there may be quite an uh, opportunity to answer questions. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Wrap it up. Do you want to conclude? No, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Sorry to interrupt you. All right. Thank you. Um, let's see, uh, Councillor Johnston might have a question for you, Mr. Sharif. Okay. 
Yes, uh, thank you through the chair. Um, thank you so much for your presentation. And uh, I, I hear you. I've heard um, uh, a lot from the neighbors about the need for, uh, for traffic calming. And um, uh, it's probably a, a perfect time to say that I, I will have a notice of motion coming forward on uh, March, March 4th with regards to traffic safety on Westwood Drive. And with your permission, uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to read it if I can. Whereas the residents of Westwood Drive are concerned about traffic safety, the seasonal traffic calming measures, uh, that seasonal traffic calming measures be installed along Westwood Drive in 2019. And further, that transportation services review the existing on-street parking regulations and prepare a report to council recommending the removal of any redundant regu regulations that were in place to serve the elementary school. And further, that traffic services collect traffic data in 2019 to determine if a formal traffic calming review is warranted in 2020. And further, that transportation services collect traffic data annually thereafter as per conditions of the city's approved traffic calming policy. So I'll be, uh, I'll be um, <clears throat> putting that forward on, on March 4th. Uh, what you were talking about with regards to um, that sign that goes in, in, uh, in the middle of the road, uh, that's the, uh, the yellow pop-up sign with the 40 kilometers per hour um, on it, is something that I've requested. Uh, as part of um, uh, traffic calming to be able to go on to Westwood, uh, Westwood Drive this year. So um, thank you. That's, uh, that's great. And thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. There are no further questions for you. Thank you. All right. So we're going to continue on with questions of staff, if there are any. All right. So I'm going to... Um, uh, come back to you, Councillor Johnston, for your second round after. So, Councillor Ioannidis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my question is in regards to the park, and in particular with the park. Um, when it was designed and refurbished, I guess, a little partially in 2012 and then 2017, I can't, is what I heard. I'm not, was it, was it, in, was it, uh, those refurbishments, were they ever, did they take an account of the change of use to the property that is beside it, that will be now being changed? Uh, Ms. McGoldrick. Yeah. Uh, so through you, Madam Chair, the timing, so the last um, upgrades to the playground equipment um, was in 2013, so there would have been a consultation process 2012-2013 in terms of the needs of the playground. I don't believe at that time um, the sale of the school property had been in effect, so it would not have looked at changes to the land use adjacent. Okay, so, so there may be some deficiencies there then, since the schools moved some of their stuff out. So through you, Madam Chair, I just want to clarify that um, when we were looking at, when we do look at parkland and neighborhood parks, it is to service the overall park. We don't necessarily take into account um, neighboring lands that may be acting um, in a park-like setting. And so we'd be looking at the overall needs of the neighborhood when we're um, looking at playground um, rehabilitation. Okay. Uh, so I don't believe that that would um, have factored into the decision making around the okay. equipment. That's good to hear. Thank you. Uh, that's that's all the questions I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Davy. Thank you. Just a general question of staff. These two, the two items we have this evening are similar, and I, I have to say that I'm I'm pleased in terms of the density. Um, can I ask in general because we're an average of like 53, 54 units. Um, was there, in either of these cases, sorry, I, I realize that um, Ms. Andrell isn't here any longer, but was there significant movement from original proposals before staff ultimately ended up with the recommendation of these number of units? Ms. Yeah. Mr. Bateman, did you hear the question? I did, okay. yes, sorry. It just took me a second to, to process that, so. Mm -hmm. Uh, the answer is, is no. They, because they have met the zoning right from the get-go, 
counselor that um, there wasn't a lot of change as a result that answers your question appropriately. Uh, it does, and I'm not sure if you were privy to the, the, the sorry, it's somewhat outside of the scope, but um, for the uh, first uh, item we dealt with as well, are you aware if that was the same situation? Um, through the chair, I honestly, I can't speak to that. Okay, no problem. Thank you, just I, curious. I, I'm not sure. Okay, no, I, I'm not gonna oh. comment. We have, a, we have an answer for you from Ms. Ross. Oh, thank you. Uh, through you, Chair, in the, uh, the previous application, um, that did require a zone change and an official plan amend amendment. Um, so there, there was some, uh, you know, movement, you know, before we, we came to the final uh, zoning on that. But really, there wasn't um, a lot of reduction in the, um, the density there as well, because they were always um, bungalow uh, townhomes, so they were, were larger home, or, a larger lot. So um, not a lot of movement there as well on that side either. Okay, very good. Yeah, just, uh, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised for the residents because I think this, in both cases, this is an appropriate amount of density, and I won't comment further. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so next we have Councillor Schneider. Yes, uh, if I could, uh, uh, Mr. Cronkite, may I ask you a question, please? You and I were recently at a traffic calming meeting and you were explaining uh, the reasons why a, a four-way and a three-way stop cannot be used as a traffic calming measure. Could you maybe just for the benefit of the residents that are here tonight explain uh, the difference between a, a traffic measure and a speed measure? Uh, certainly through you, Madam Chair. In terms of always stops, they, when we install them, it's based on a warrant system. So uh, for an all-way stop to be warranted, it needs to meet a minimum vehicular volume, and that same vehicular volume also needs to be split appropriately between the cross-secting streets. When we don't have that scenario, uh, what ends up happening essentially is we end up with a more serious condition than what we initially started with in that, generally speaking, in those terms, you have an increase in rear-end collisions, and uh, you also have poor compliance. And when you have poor compliance, uh, what you end up with is making a, a much more dangerous situation for pedestrians than you would have initially had in the first place. Uh, so for those two, there, there are a number of other factors as well, but those two primary factors are, are the primary reasons that as staff we, we don't recommend unwarranted always stops. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cronkite. Um, Ms. McGoldrick, do you have additional information? Oh. You had clicked on. Okay, never mind. All right, so uh, any further questions? Nope, that was it. Okay, great. So, um, Councillor Johnston. Thank you. Um, through you, my questions as well are for Mr. Cronkite. Um, and uh, Mr. Cronkite, um, you may remember, was at the, uh, the meeting on January 22nd and uh, had spoken at the time about a number of uh, of um, things that the city was looking to do to uh, make some changes to signage, et cetera. So that, that's in, that, in this motion, motion. Thank you so much, Mr. Cronkite. Um, I did have a question, a few questions uh, as well. So I'm wondering if you um, could tell us what would the difference be between the traffic the, uh, the neighborhood would have dealt with when the school was there and the traffic um, that uh, will be there now with the proposed development. Through you, Madam Chair, in terms of the uh, traffic that was there prior to the closure of the school, uh, in and around the area of that location, there was around uh, 1,100 vehicles a day. Uh, and what we, uh, what we had collected in in 2016, so after the school was closed, was very similar. In terms of the unit count that we're expecting here, right in around that, the, the 58 units, that generates in the peak hour uh, around 30 vehicles uh, for the peak hour. So uh, when you translate that over the entire day, um, a maximum amount that you would see increase on the roadway would be about 300 vehicles for that day. So taking uh, that total number in that area anyway to, to 1,300 vehicles a day, uh, that's uh, well within 
the range of what we would anticipate for a roadway like this. This is a minor neighborhood collector roadway. Okay, thank you. And I think that if we're able to um, um, have this motion go through, we'll, we'll be able to uh, collect some better data um, ongoing as well. So that's great. Um, when residents have had uh, similar developments occur in, in their neighborhoods, um, oftentimes there's, there's fear regarding traffic increases and accidents, et cetera. Have you seen that come to fruition in your experience? Through you, Madam Chair. In a development this size, traditionally, no. It's, uh, uh, I think it's a scary thing at first for residents. It is change, and it is uh, change of use. But from a, strictly from a transportation engineering standpoint, it doesn't generate um, a condition that's much different than what they would have been used to prior. Okay, that's great. Thank you. That's uh, all the questions I have for you. Thank you. Okay. There appear to be no further questions. Uh, we do have a recommendation. Do, do we have a mover of the recommendation? Uh, Councillor Davey. Uh, so uh, now we'll, we have come to the point where we can uh, make comments. Are there any comments? Please click in. Okay, great. Councillor Singh. Yeah, just to be very quick, um, I think that the report itself was very thorough and through the presentation the staff and the applicant had made. It seems to be a, um, a redevelopment in an area uh, and ask for density that is appropriate to the neighborhood, uh, especially in keeping of uh, other neighboring properties that are more high density in comparison. Uh, I appreciate the, the, the residents' concerns and uh, aspect to the, the park and some changes, and that's that would have likely have happened irrespective of what's being asked for the site. Uh, simply that's no longer a school and those amenities are on someone else's lands, although they were being used for the park. I think what's coming out of this redevelopment is change to a neighborhood that's through good consultation with the community, working with the developer through our staff, and of course having a very proactive uh, representative um, uh, you know, a, um, a representative uh, as your ward councillor who has, you know, picked up on what the needs of the community are in respect to the park and changes to it. And uh, that's really well to see that you have a, a developer that's uh, wanting to give back in some form through, through this development. And uh, that's, that's a change for the positive. As well as, of course, um, I'm glad to see that uh, there are suggestions or a motion that's uh, a notice of motion that's been given uh, to council that would uh, speak to the concerns of the residents uh, in respect to traffic. And those are the two things that we really heard. So um, when we see development like this in a built-up neighborhood, uh, there's a lot of issues that come forward. That's not necessarily the case here. I think there are challenges, but we, uh, from the conversation, it's noticeable that from all three groups, from the city and the residents and the developer, it seems to be a consensus to look for proactive ways for solutions. And so I think this is good development. And uh, I'm just, of course, at the same time, seeing the, the complementary um, aspect of all parties involved, I think this will be a great development for the neighborhood going forward. Thank you, Councillor Singh. Councillor Schneider. Thank you, Chair Marsh. Uh, I do want to thank all the residents who came out tonight and, uh, and presented in front of Council and for everyone who's, who's given comments to our staff. Uh, I feel our staff have uh, done a good job. This is a very thorough report. I just want to say through personal experience, I, I've uh, been involved uh, with Mr. Cook in, in a uh, uh, development that he's doing in my ward, and I can tell you that he's very fair. Uh, there were items on the site plan that uh, normally council does not get involved. We do not get involved in the site plan process, but uh, I took concerns that the residents had to Mr. Cook, and he was very fair and considered some of them. Uh, I think you'll find him to be a developer that really cares about his reputation and is proud of it and doesn't want any tarnishes on it. So I think you'll find that you're going to get a very good, solid development and you're going to have a person that will continue to listen to you to uh, as much as, as he can without uh, affecting his development. And the fact that he is willing to uh, contribute towards the park, I think, goes a long way in showing that. All right. Thank you. Councillor Ioannidis. 
Thank you, Madam Chair Marsh. Um, the way I look at this, uh, at first, when I first looked at this, I was like, oh, this is going to be stacked townhomes. <laughs> and then when I got into the details and I was like, semis, I'm like, wow. Like, to me, that's uh, the lowest, like, the most sensitive use that I think at the lowest level of in, in, in density that you could probably, that you could put on this site. So I think, uh, and then I think that's a, a really good plus for the community. And when I when I start when I start looking at the design of uh, and and all that, and they they kind of look they're really really nice. So I mean I think this is going to really enhance the neighborhood. And what I was really glad to see, and thanks for your input, and I think I think uh, your ward councillor has addressed quite a bit of those concerns with uh, addressing with Mr. Cook and his willingness to to. Uh, to look at the park and see whether what other deficiencies and whatever support he can have, and really we don't get that with much developments. So that's I think is a really huge win. Um, when we look at the drainage issues, as, as the one delegation, uh, I see that more not as as the developments, uh, Mr. Cook's uh, the developer's uh, responsibility. I see that as more of our responsibility, and from what I see from our staff. 2023 20, or 20 whatever in the near future they will be looked at and, and if so to me I think those issues will eventually solve itself whether they were indeficient or not that's on our end I don't think that's not Mr. Cook's Mr. Cook's end um, and then my final one is with the with the park I, or no I did say the park the, the transportation sorry is the transportation uh, I think uh, with the the motion that uh, Councillor Johnson is going to bring forward too is going to address some of those is going to address some of those concerns as well. So I think I think there's a really good comprehensive plan here that's been put forward to address your concerns. And at the end of the day, I really think this is going to be a great addition to your to your neighborhood. Uh, thank you. Uh, before I leave it to the ward councillor for her comments, I'll just make a couple of comments myself. So I, I think it's really wonderful to see. Uh, that uh, a proposed development site has has uh, increased the amount of community engagement in the neighborhood and to hear about a group of 40 to 50 neighbors who've come together to share their concerns and share their uh, their insights about what they'd like to see uh, is is only going to result in in something positive uh, but the purpose of our meeting tonight was, of course, to uh, decide on this application. And uh, the comments that we received tonight were uh, almost all regarding issues that can be dealt with apart from this development. And uh, and and the city is is uh, looking at uh, making those those changes uh, with regard to traffic and drainage, etc., as as have already been mentioned. And so I think. That um, the information that we received tonight uh, from the residents is is less about this development and more about what what needs to happen and and uh, for us to learn about that uh, in a, in addition to uh, any any comments on on the development is only going to to help us uh, in moving forward. Uh, so uh, I uh, I'm pleased to see the uh, the general support around the horseshoe tonight for this for this development. Councillor Johnston. Thank you. Um, I, I want to I want to thank all the residents for coming out tonight. Uh, you've been very engaged. You've <coughs> made great presentations. You've been in touch with me. Um, I really appreciate that. I look forward to working with you. This is. Uh, um, this is just the start of, uh, of working together on uh, things that we can do in your neighborhood. I'm excited about all the initiatives with Love My Hood that we can be taking a look at as well, and I can be helping you with, um, with two. I wanted to really thank the staff. Um, this, is, uh, this is my first time going through, uh, going through something like this, and they have all been extremely, extremely helpful. Thank you so much. So, so just from, from seeing uh, from my council colleagues, from staff, from the neighbors, I think that we've got uh, a good team here to, uh, to make some good things happen. So I'm excited about, um, about this. So thank you. All right. Thank you. And with that, uh, we have no further comments. So uh, it's time to vote. Uh, all in favor of the motion? Opposed? And that carries unanimously.
And that concludes our meeting tonight. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And, uh, and uh, I hope everybody uh, takes care. I don't know how windy it is now out there. Hopefully not as windy as last night.